give me a hand, raise your hand, uh, or use the chat box for this to make sure that you can hear and see me. Not yet. Okay, good. So it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's the the best exercise to start the day. Um, because we'll be using the chat today. We'll be using the raising hands. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the technical parts of this webinar. So, without any further ado, welcome everyone to how to run a successful coaching business. My name is Radu Seuke, and I'll be your uh, best coach 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 this morning for the next uh, fifty nine minutes. I think we still have will be dwelling into what are the actual keys and processes behind uh, running a successful coaching business. I've started my coaching and training business about 12 years ago. And everything that I'm presenting today is based on my experience. Things that I've either personally done or have achieved with my coaching clients. I've been training coaches for the past six years. And when I was running my first coaching certifications, I realized that there was something that was missing from all the coaching certifications that were around. As in, most of the courses were very, very good um, at enabling people to be amazing coaches. And I'm sure that you are as well. And most of them would have nothing on how to actually sell coaching or how to have a successful coaching business in the end. And I've met so many, so many coaches from all around the world, uh, with, whether it's life coaches or sports coaches or executive coaches or business coaches, whatever kind of coaches, all struggling with the business side of things. Something that we don't usually talk in the normal certification courses. So about uh, five years ago, I decided that I need to add an extra module to every time I'm doing a certification because I'm always interested in giving my participants an edge in what they're getting. And I think teaching someone how to become a coach is irrelevant is as long as they don't actually get to practice their talent, their um, qualifications, because they don't know how to run a business. So I've put together all this experience. I've worked until now with about 500 coaches from more than 30 countries, helping them to build successful businesses. Because I don't know about you, but for me, I've discovered very early on the coaching that if I don't have this uh, business aspect to it, it becomes a very expensive hobby. It's very nice. You get nice training courses. You meet people, you do coaching for free. And then at some point you also have to pay the bills. So, my aim today is to show you how and share with you what is my own personal recipe for success and help you then um, adapt it to what you can do. Before we begin, I, I know that already some of you are telling me good morning and I know that we have uh, participants from all around the world this morning. I'm logging in from Dubai, so I'm curious, where are you logging in from? And uh, this is an opportunity to to use the chat to get uh, um, to get uh, used to use the chat because we'll be using it a lot today. Um, so we have uh, um, Michael who's saying uh, good morning from Tokyo. Uh, we have Marie who's saying good morning from or good afternoon from Australia. Um, we have some some people from the United uh, Arab Emirates, from Sydney, from Alexandria, from Abu Dhabi, from California from India, so we are indeed covering uh, the whole, the whole um, planet. Thank you very much for joining me today. My main point today is to help you get value. So I do have a couple of slides, I have a couple of, of ideas, but I want to work with you today to find out exactly what your present current issues are and how can we fix them together. Because I know that if I can give you a couple of solutions that you can implement right away, you can already start becoming a successful coach. If you think about success like this, many people think that the successful coach is one who's very skilled. Yes. For me, I see it in a different way. A successful coach is a coach who can make an impact. And if you don't have any clients, uh, then maybe not so much. 
impact. Um, so how to make the best of this webinar? At this point, we have uh, 56 minutes left. Please stop all of your distractions. I know this is not easy nowadays, and I'm convinced that if you do that, you're gonna get the best out of it. Pay attention and take notes, and also do all the exercises to the best of your ability. We will have a couple of exercises, and I do need you so that we can build together what will be a session that can uh, give you enough to start with in building your successful coaching business. Now, every time I'm in front of a group, I'm always curious, why are you here? Because if you wouldn't have a good enough reason for being here, you would probably be somewhere else. And I have a couple of reasons why people join this program, because I have launched, as I said, about five years ago. We run it every year, twice or thrice since then, and wrote a book about it, which is called Develop Your Business in 100 Steps, which was, it started from this project, from how to actually build a, success, a successful coaching business in 100 steps. And I wanna know what your reasons are. What is the one thing that if you find out today how to do it, um, it will enable you to say that this was the best session that you've ever attended. What is the one thing that if you get today from me, you'd be able to say this was the best session, it was completely worth my time. And drop me a note in the chat. If you have a concrete thing that you'd like to discuss or solve, it, this is the time to do it. In the meantime, because I know that there's a bit of a delay with the internet, I'll give you a couple of the reasons that people choose or chose this program in the past. Um, some of the coaches that are joining this program are curious to understand why the business is not working. Others, they don't know which tools to promote, um, which tools to use to promote, because there's so many options nowadays and some are more expensive than others. And they're curious which one is the best one to, to choose. Um, some of you, and I know if you're, even if you're not gonna say it, you're here because you want to stop procrastinating. If you've been postponing uh, and to actually have a successful coaching business and you were waiting for a sign, this is it. Uh, you don't have clear goals related to your business or offerings, or um, you want to know how to find clients and also keep them. You want to turn your strategy into action. I know we're very good at creating strategies and drafting outcomes because we're coaches, of course. There's a bit of a challenge usually with putting it into practice. Um, you want to develop offerings that provide value and make a change. And I see that we already have Michael who's saying the same thing, who's drafting a compelling proposition. And you are already successful and really want to take your business to the next level. Um, these are a couple of the reasons. I'm curious which ones are yours. Uh, Guy says, to be teachable, ongoing. I have been coaching for 24 years. Thank you. And it's a still, there's so much more to learn because the coaching market is changing. The decision-making strategies and the buying strategies of the clients are, being, are changing. So it's no longer enough to be an amazing coach. To be successful as a coach, you need to be an amazing salesperson as well. So it's, uh, it's good that we, that we continue learning. Uh, talking about the market, how it is now, um, it reminds me of the two types of people that we have around. You know, the, it's a financial crisis. Nobody buys coaching. Um, and then there's me that says it's financial crisis. So everybody should be buying coaches. Uh, everybody can become a client. Maybe not for me, maybe for someone else. And that's okay. Um, the idea is to find the ones that are actually your clients. So is there anything else that if you get today is going to completely enable you to start becoming a successful coach and have a successful coaching business? If yes, drop it in the chat. I have my, my eyes there. Uh, I also have my team with me. Thank you very much for joining this morning, all of you, uh, who will help me just in case I miss something um, from, the, from the chat box. Um, 
thank you very much. We also have people that are will be promoting their services here. Please do uh, try. In the end, we'll talk about the sales rules in a bit. So, um, who is this webinar for? This is a webinar that was built for coaches. So if you're not yet certified as a coach by whatever certification body that there is on this planet, because we have several, um, then this is not a, a webinar that is built for you. So this is built on top of a coaching certification. If you're not yet certified as a coach, drop me a line after this session and we'll talk about what are the possibilities. The program can also be adapted to someone who wants to run a coaching business who's not a coach. And it's not exactly the one that is built today. So some of the things that, are, that I'm covering today are presupposing that you already have enough coaching knowledge uh, and about how the process works, because I'm not going to be discussing about the actual coaching process. Um, this is this is a webinar for people who like to communicate. If you don't like to communicate, I'm sorry, switch off. There's nothing that I can teach you that can make you have a successful coaching business. Communication is key. So if you're still playing the I'm an introvert card, I'm an introvert card, or um, I don't have a lot of uh, people that I know I'm not so convinced about talking to people. Um, there are some limiting beliefs maybe there that you should get rid of. If you don't know how, <laughs> let me know after the session. Um, this is, that's the most, the most important key is to have an open mind that some of the things that I'm going to tell you today work when you do them. Actually, all of them work when you do them. If you don't do them, for sure, they don't work. And we've been, because of the way the educational system works nowadays, we've, we've become very analytic. Sometimes we don't even try something because we decide or we decided somewhere in the past that it doesn't work. I'm, um, I'm asking you to think of the mind as a parachute. It works best when it's open. If I'm telling you that something works, go ahead and try it and then make your conclusion. Keep your mind open like a child and get curious. Um, we'll be talking about uh, um, positive uh, psychology as well in later on today. Thank you very much, Tapan, for the, for the mention. Um, who are you? This is what I'm curious of. And let's do a first exercise for today. The first exercise for today is for you to tell me in 140 characters or less, who are you? Who are you as a coach? How do you describe yourself? For example, whenever someone is asking me this, I always say, I don't refer to myself as a coach. I say I enable executives and their teams to meet and exceed their KPIs. If you could write it in 140 characters or less, what would your description be? Leave it in the chat and we're gonna come back to that. I'm pre-teaching some of the exercises because I know that there's a bit of a delay and somehow people are not so used to having an interactive session. And that's okay. We'll learn that as well today. Before we go any further, I want you to go on an imaginary trip with me. Let's imagine that we are now a year from now. It's the 21st of March, 2022. And you've just gotten a testimonial from a client. You've been running for a year now, a successful coaching business, and you just got a testimonial from a client. If you could have anything as that testimonial, what would the testimonial be? What would your client say? Just curious. Now I'll give you a bit of time to write it down. 
because this is what we're doing um, future mental memory about what's going to happen a year from now if you make the decision to um, have and start running a successful coaching business. What would your client say? That's the, that's the exercise. Until I'm getting a couple of the responses, This is also very important because you'll see, you'll discover today, everything that I'm teaching is very customer centric. It's less about the complicated processes inside and it's more about the clients. So if they could, if they could give you, just imagine if they could give you a testimonial, what would it be? Okay, I see that there's a lot of people that are typing. That's good. Until I'm getting a couple of the responses, I'm gonna go on to presenting, if you want, the distilled knowledge and mindset of 12 years of running coaching businesses and helping other coaches run successful coaching businesses. Um, yeah, Anna is telling me that uh, I help them doing themselves, which improve their life in general. That's a great testimonial to get. Loving themselves. Okay, even better. Uh, you help me understand that aspect of my behavior, which I was not aware of. Okay, thank you very much, Sarita. Getting a couple of answers. Exciting. I have transformed lives by helping people to live a life of abundance. Good. Thank you, Sapna. Thank you very much for that. See if we get one more. If not, the keys to running a successful coaching business. <laughs> um, these keys are nothing special. They're just magic. And what's important to understand about the seven keys is that they only work when you apply all of them all of the time. As a systems engineer, I know very well that if any part of the system is not working or it's given less attention than the others, it will stop the system from actually working. And I'm going to present them and I'm going to ask you, which ones are you focusing on? Which ones do you need to have more focus on so that you know? The first one, the first key to running a successful coaching business is to keep it short and simple. Most of the coaches, when they hear about business, like business owners, they think it has to be extremely um, complicated that you need to have a complicated offering, that you need to have a complex website, that you need to remember the first key, keep it short and simple. The, the more simple it is, the easier it's going to be to manage. And you will get to the point when you're getting into more complex systems. Although if you remember that rule, this will enable you to create better proposals, to get better clients and to do better transformations. Um, we see everywhere coaches that can do everything. Focus on what you want and then keep it short and simple. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that in the coming minutes. The second key to running a successful coaching business is to define your success. You know that very well because every coaching cycle that we do with our clients starts with setting outcomes. I'm curious, what does success mean to you and how are you measuring it? And I've been hearing a couple of responses saying, I want to pay, change people's lives. I want to make money. I, how much, how many lives, to what extent? If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. And there seems to be a sort of a fear in the coaches world in setting smarter outcomes. We ask our clients to do it. When it comes to the business, we don't always. 
So if you could have anything, a success, what would it be and how would you measure it? Make a decision and then hold yourself accountable to it. Once you've decided what the success means, then you need a logical framework. The logical framework refers to how you actually make decisions. It's your simple, clear set of values and processes that enable you to make better decisions. Is everyone a client? Potentially, yes. Do I want to take them on as a client? Not necessarily. Do, what impact do I want to make? Should I be engaging with someone who I know I cannot help? Should I uh, accept less money? Should I, this all comes from the logical framework, the way I call it logical framework, which is our very clear set of values that enable us to make better decisions. And once we decide that, then stick to them because consistency is key. When I started some 12 years ago, uh, I had a couple of months at the beginning where I had client meetings. They wanted to hire me and I was saying no. And at some point my accountant said, uh, rather this is not the best business decision. At some point you will also have to invoice. And I said, no, I will only commit to work with someone when I know that I can deliver extraordinary impact and change. Otherwise I won't do it. This is also why I have a 100% success rate with the clients. Not because I'm that amazing, but because the client selection process is very tough. You'll see in a bit. Um, yeah, measuring outcome is the biggest challenges of right now. I know for everyone uh, because it's not clear yet. And it's, if it's not clear, it's not an outcome. Um, as long as, it, as long as it pays, Guy says that he works two hours a day on my hobby, which is a paying hobby. That's brilliant. Um, client needs to meet you halfway. Yes. And it depends. It depends what kind of support they need in order to do the transformation. Because compromises can uh, sometimes make the coaching process longer. It's a, it's a good belief to have that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And here I am. <laughs> um, the fourth key to running a successful coaching business is income. Someone very old and very wise told me once, you cannot pour from an empty cup. There is a limit of how many people you can help if you're not making any money. Coaching is successful as a business when you have multiple streams of income, when you're able to create spirals and funnels, when you're able to do cross-selling, upselling, when you are able to have an offering for different classes. Think about airlines. Think about having uh, economy tickets, uh, business class tickets, and first class tickets. Um, how do you make a million? Well, you can either sell 1 million pieces of one, or you can sell one piece of 1 million. Success is somewhere in between in having a mix in the offering that can enable you to attract certain types of clients. And what I've learned in all these years is that as long as I have three offers, an economy one, a business one, and a first class one, I'll always have clients for all of them. And interestingly enough, no matter how the times are, um, this is just my experience. The number is kind of consistent. People do change. The number is consistent. Uh, proportion is also the same. The fifth key to running a successful coaching business is sales. Um, the main rule behind this is to be better at sales, you need to start loving being sold to. I'll say it again. To be better at sales, you need to start loving being sold to. 
if you hate being sold to, because of rapport, the people around you will hate you selling to them. You want to sell more? Stop loving being sold to. And I'm not saying that you should buy. I'm saying get curious about people giving you offers. Let me give you an example. The phone rings and you get an offer on the phone. If your first reaction is to put it down immediately and switch it off and say, I'm not interested, it's very likely that you'll be receiving the same kind of treatment from your clients, from the ones that you're trying to cold call. That's why you're afraid of cold calling because you hate being cold called. So you want to fix it? Start a conversation. On several occasions, I sold coaching and training contracts to people that called to sell me something. Because guess what? Uh, since I sometimes do sales coaching, uh, I know exactly what they go through. So the moment when they get a bit of support, they get curious about how could they actually have a good day uh, with it? So get very curious. I'm not saying that you should buy <laughs> always. That's not a good strategy. Um, get curious about how people sell before you say no. The sixth one is make an offer. Every time, every time you meet someone, whether it's a client, a friend, a family, always make an offer. Make an offer, of course, that is appropriate to the conversation. As I am going to make an offer you today. Some people will say no, that's fine. I want to know that I've done my share. If I can make an impact, I'm going to suggest the offer. If I know I can make an impact, I'm going to suggest the offer. Um, leave the clients the right and the privilege to choose if they want you or not. If you don't give them the offer, you're actually sabotaging them because you're not allowing them. They, maybe they need your help and you're not allowing them to get it because you're not making an offer. Uh, seven, value. Create value for your clients. Consistently create value for your clients and measure it. The first one, we kind of know. Second one, measure it. Not only for yourself, but also for your clients. I think now you get to see a bit of my thinking behind how my system works in how these wheels are connected with everything. And if you ask me what is the biggest, the most important of the keys here that helped me significantly transform everything that I've done, uh, it's the keep it short and simple. I have a tendency to overcomplicate things. So I have that as a big reminder. Is it simple enough? Is it simple enough? Okay, so I want to know which one of the seven are you struggling with? Just give me the number. I'm just curious, we'll do a poll to see which one you're struggling with, um, which one you're not at 100% yet. Okay. Uh, interestingly enough, it's uh, four, five, and six. So the money circles, as I call them, good. Um, because that's, that's actually the key of what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what is the system that you need to have in place, the technology that you need to have in place, or the methodology that you need to have in place in order to create more income uh, through more sales and better offers because they're all connected there. So I wanna show you my recipe, if that's okay with you. If it's okay with you, put your hand up, give me a thumbs up, write something in the chat so that I know that you're still there. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that when we have someone who wants, still wants to define success, that's good as well. Uh, by the end of the session, you should, you should already know uh, what it is. It's a decision. It's not a discovery. You need to decide uh, what success is and then commit to it. 
of course. So let's put it under the microscope and see exactly what is, what do you need to have, what do you need to master in order to run a successful coaching business. This is my model of the world. Again, I'm, it's, uh, I haven't learned it in school. I don't think there's a school that teaches this. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, or should I say, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. I've learned a lot in these 12 years. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, the first one, the first element of it is knowing very well who you are as a coach. How do you define yourself as a coach? There are many coaches here that because they follow the certain certification program or they didn't, they call themselves, but it's not very clear. So they don't know exactly what their values are, what their goals are, what their first make peace with yourself. Uh, if uh, we're talking about Eastern philosophies, get to know you because you want to know who you are so that you can uh, attract the customers that you want to have. Many people start in a different way. I don't know why, where this was taught, uh, taught like this. And we were saying, okay, define your target audience. That's how the business course start. You define your target audience and then um, you'll find the customers and then nobody finds the customers. You don't find the customers because you're defining the target audience before you know who you are. How about you decide who you are and then decide who you want to work with? Just a different thought. Um, okay. After you, you define who your uh, um, customers are, then you develop products and services. This is again, I'm gonna say this is, it's very um, interesting. Uh, Michael, you give me, give me five more minutes and then you'll have the whole model to take a picture of. <laughs> and I'll send you the links. Uh, once you have the products and services, once, so you develop products and services again, this is something that is happening um, the other way around. We go to a coaching certification, we go to a course and they say, okay, create an offer but you don't know who your target audience is and you don't know who, the, who you are as a coach. Uh, for me, the sequence was the one that made the difference. So you know who you are as a coach, you define who you want to have as customers, and then depending on the needs of those customers, you create amazing offers. What do most coaches do? Oh, I want to do career coaching. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna create a product for career coaching. And they invest all the resources that they have in order to build the best website and the best text. And, the, and then they need to find clients. The reason why it fails is because it's not based on a target that you decided beforehand. So sequence is the one that makes the biggest difference here. Uh, I've met trainers, by the way, because trainers at the same time, um, they get certified as a trainer. They were, I, I'd like to do a course on public speaking they would even develop the course completely and then try to sell it. I discovered that it's a lot easier to build the offer together with your customer. Yes, it takes a bit more energy, much higher impact. You build it together with them from their needs, either directly by asking them or by identifying the, the needs before. And then you create the products and services. I always say products and services because remember, my, my idea was different streams of income. As a coach, you can coach, you can write, you can speak, you can have YouTube channels, you can have, there's so many ways in which you can monetize the work. The more streams you have, the better. Don't put all your eggs in the same basket. Okay. After you've um, clarified who you are, what are your customers, your products and services, then it's time to talk about how you're gonna promote them. 
only then you need to start employing promotion strategies. So if you haven't yet, if you don't have yet clarity of who you are, who your customers are, what your products and services are, of course you don't know how to promote it. But when you know exactly where your target audience is and what you're offering, then how to reach them becomes a lot easier to discover and to identify. Technology this morning, until it works, the next step in the, in the process is the sales strategy. How you're actually going to drive sales because, um, and how you're actually managing the sales. You can also choose to, for someone else to sell for you. And there's an option for that. We're gonna discuss about it later on. But in most of the cases, you need to start mastering your own sales process. And interestingly enough, in everywhere where I worked until now, no matter how good my sales team was, it's still me closing. The client still needs to meet me before they can decide. So mastering sales is a super important step in this. Uh, once you have all this set somehow, um, there's another key element, which is something that until now, I think you should know this uh, already, how it happened, how it happens, the, the importance of all the elements here. There's two more that I found out that made very big difference. Uh, one is customer experience and customer journey. As a best coach, you need to be able to define what is the journey that your customer or your, the experience that your customer needs to go through. And when I say experience or journey, it doesn't mean the coaching process. It means having a clear step-by-step -step plan from the very first moment they find out about you until they leave happily and satisfied bringing up other people. That journey needs to have possible upgrades, possible cross sales, all the possibilities mapped. The principle that I use for experience, for the customer experience and um, journey is, a, it's a threefold one. The customers need to be happy and satisfied. So not just happy emotionally, but also satisfied with the results that they're getting. They're different things, by the way. Because we have happy clients, but they're not really satisfied. And we have satisfied clients who are not really happy. So they need to be both happy and satisfied. They need to want to come back. And they need to want to tell everyone about you without you asking them. For those of you who are curious about how I'm measuring success in the customer journey, this is it. They need to be happy and satisfied. They need to want to come back provided of course I have something else to offer to them and they need to tell everyone without me asking. So that puts a bit in perspective what I need to do as a coach, how I need to behave in order to enable that to happen. And yes, there are ways in making sure that that happens. And that's very important. It's not that it, we need to understand that us as coaches control the journey, the customer experience. So if we want a certain type of result, we need to work for it. And there are ways of creating that. And the last one that made the uh, significant difference to me, wait, okay. It's having processes. So once I knew what the customer experience is, I build processes for everything. I have a process for the way I develop the offers. I have a process for the way I promote, sell, follow up something. So for example, tomorrow you're going to get an email after this webinar. You only get one from me, by the way. 
um, it's a take it or leave it kind of thing. The whole plan, the whole customer journey for an entry point that is this webinar is thought through, planned and designed before the webinar happens. So all the messages, all the materials, everything is already developed um, in terms of a plan. Of course, if we start working together, especially if we work together one-on-one, -on -one, then there's a lot of tailoring happening. But the sales process, if you want, or the, the, the customer journey is already put in place. And I've met so many coaches that say, okay, I'm going to run a webinar because I want to promote my services. And the moment when they start the webinar, they don't know what the program is. They don't know what the price is. And they don't have the email, the first emails to be sent after done. And then they go, ah, nobody wrote back. Yeah, people don't. Uh, you need to take initiative related to that. So just to review uh, on this model. Uh, it's very important that you define who you are as a coach, what your values are, what you stand for, because you'll be attracting clients that are like you, which is also very interesting because it's very likely that they will have the same challenges that you do. So by the way, if you don't fix your own stuff, let's call them stuff and not other words because we can't speak French now. Uh, clients will have the amazing talent of bringing up stuff that you had or have as well. So if you're struggling as a coach and you're not making any money, guess what? I can guarantee that you're gonna have a line of clients that can't afford paying you. So fix your stuff, <laughs> it's as easy as that. Um, this is the moment when you need to decide who you are as a coach, what you stand for, and what is the, what are your, what's your line? What, where, where do you fit? How do you position yourself, but also, do, do's and don'ts on a very judger level. It's a yes or no, there's no maybes. I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to do this and basically how far I will go. Yes, one of the rules that we learn as coaches is uh, the uh, law of requisite, requisite variety that says uh, uh, the person with the most flexibility has the most influence in the system. Is that the system that you want to influence? Does it fit who you are or not? I've, because I'm, I've started my career in training and coaching actually from the media world, coming, uh, coaching and training spokespeople. Um, and something that I've learned 15 years ago in that was that uh, you are who, the, who your clients say you are. Every time you choose a client and you're making um, concession, it can, it becomes part of your reputation. So saying, okay, just this time, I'm gonna make this exception. Uh, it can come back to haunt you. Plus, if you're teaching concession, uh, the clients who need a very disciplined minded coach, uh, you'll struggle with them. Big decisions, I know. Okay, once you know who you are as a coach, then you need to position yourself. So as I said, remember defining who your target audience is in this order. Who do you want to have? What are their dreams? What are their hopes? What are their nightmares? What are their fears? What, how could you, in what area could you help them grow the easiest and fastest? Where could you have the highest impact? And start from there. I know as a coach, you can do anything. Choose a starting point for the target audience that is relevant to you. Develop product and services based on the customers that you've identified their needs and wants and their fears, and also your values. They're just reviewing everything. 
And then of course you need to communicate it once they're done. I'm not saying that you should be developing fully the whole set of materials for a coaching process before you sell it. Actually, I never do. I always have an outline. You will see because you're going to get a link. And I develop all my coaching and training products together with the customers. So the materials are not done beforehand. If you want, uh, I would never develop materials for something that I'm not paid for. We decided we're going to work together. This is the plan. I'm going to do it for you. It's one of the secrets of the trade. I've met so many coaches, again, that are trying to, that they're trying to find customers for something that they built because they spend so much time building it. This is, by the way, the, the excuse of 2020 in the world of coaches. Uh, how was the year? I was very busy. I did a lot of recordings. I prepared a lot of video materials. No clients, of course, but kept busy. And now I'm trying to sell the products that I've developed. Okay, so <laughs> let's change something there. Um, once you start communicating, the biggest skill that you can master is converting them. Converting people from getting, uh, be paying attention to being interested, to um, deciding that they want to do it and to taking action. I think the biggest leap is from the interest level. Everyone's interested in coaching, actually, if you think about it. They find it interesting, whatever coaching it is. Um, some of them even have the desire. Very few are ready to take action. That's your role, to enable them to go from I desire coaching to I'm ready to pay for it. And yes, by the way, I speak a lot about money today. If you have any kind of money issues, limiting beliefs, uh, negative emotions about asking for money, about uh, either sort them, or give me, a, give me a text after we finish this. Because your relationship with money will determine your level of success in your coaching business. Huh. Is it a love and hate relationship? Um, after you have all this, of course, then it's, uh, it's about designing a customer journey that is so amazing that they're happy, satisfied, they want to come back and they tell everyone. Uh, Monera is asking me how, uh, how, what, how I fix my relationship, how I fix my relationship with money. Yes, okay, that's, First of all, identify what the relationship is. Let go of all the negative beliefs and uh, negative emotions and limiting beliefs that you have related to that. Make peace with the past and rebuild it. This is, by the way, I've met the biggest coaches of the world. Get a coach exactly for this matter. This is a specific area. By the way, no one talks about it, okay? Because it's a big secret. Um, the fixing the relationship with the money is, and I'm not saying that you need to have like a brilliant coach with you. Sometimes you need to have someone who's extremely tough to hold you accountable and make you say out loud some of the things that you're saying to yourself or you're not saying to yourself. Plus, by the way, I've just installed an excuse in you. I've given you the excuse of saying, well, I cannot be successful because I don't have a good relationship with, with the money. If you can fix it or find a way to fix it, how will you be able to help your clients? I don't know what they teach you in, in the school that you followed. Mine was very clear. You are not allowed to ask a client to do something that you're not able to do. And if you're not sure, you need to do it first. Uh, 
Uh, ya. Yeah. Monera will have a will have a chat. There is an opportunity for this, by the way, uh, for after the session to to discuss about this. And of course, managing processes. Keep it short and simple. I think this is for me. This this is the big key because now it looks like you're looking at this model and you're saying, um, "This is the whole model, Michael." By the way, uh, you're looking at the model and you're saying, "Gosh, this is." very complicated. How would I ever be able to master this? Because um, this was my, my concern as well. When I put everything together and I said, okay, how would we be able to, would I ever be able to manage it and learn it? And of course the answer is yes, because I said, okay, if this is how, what I need to have. If I have all these, if this guarantees success, whatever success is for me, then I have to find a way to do it. And I did. And I've put it all together in something that we call uh, now the Best Coach Mastery Series. It's a seven weeks program in which we spend one week on each of the areas of work. I've actually had a uh, well, I'll show you how they look like, because I'm not going to make you an offer, not like this today. Or maybe I will, we'll see. Um, there are three options of doing it. The first one is live webinars. Every week you learn something in one of the modules, you're getting a workbook and all the resources and you're getting the business compass. This is basically, it's your home study because you do it in your own way. The second option is with mentoring meaning that for each of the webinars every week, you also have a mentoring session with an expert in that specific area. Most of the times me. Um, and there are also some of the areas in, in which I have other wizards <laughs> that are better than me, like for example, uh, social media and promotion and stuff. Um, access to resources. And I think the one that makes the biggest difference is uh, actually uh, ongoing phone support for six months. Uh, I have a principle of all in. So if you're gonna be if you're gonna be working with me, it means that outside the scheduled coaching sessions, you have unlimited access always. Uh, I know I, I can see on some of the faces here and going, how does that work? It's a very simple strategy. It only works if you're amazing as a coach, so that the people never have to call you. If you're not, and they have to call you all the time, then you have an issue of offering this. Um, the last or the most uh, interesting way of approaching this is the seven weeks plus a four days business breakthrough system in which we spend four days together, the two of us, and we do a breakthrough session, letting go of everything that's holding you back from the past, rebuilding the future, and then doing all the um, business development part face-to-face -face, uh, in four days. You're still getting the mentoring, of course, um, because I do believe that it's good to have a way of following up. And maybe some of the things cannot be achieved in those four days because we're not going to spend the time building your website, that's for sure. So I'd rather that we make a plan in those four days and then you, we build the website and then you get to that. Um, and the intensive also comes with uh, something that's probably cutting edge. I'm giving you 10 client conversations on top of that. So you start not only with getting all the knowledge, setting up all the processes so that you have everything done in seven weeks. Why seven weeks, by the way? Because I have some people that ask me, why can't we do it faster? You can, but I've learned that people over promise how fast they can achieve it. And uh, I also know that how to eat an elephant, you need to eat one bit at a time. Seven weeks, it's realistic. Some areas will take more than others, that's true. Some will take less in a, in a certain week. Overall, that's the time that I'm estimating. 
um, going back to the model, imagine that this is a wheel. So you have all these uh, steps, these seven slices of a pizza. Think about for a second to each of them, to what extent you're already operating in them. So for example, how much, what's the percentage for you as a coach, how much you've defined, how much you know who you are, to, to what extent you're operating as customers in terms of products, in terms of promotion and sales and so on. And maybe draw the, the percentage so that you see it. And then you've done this before because I think this is very, the, the inspiration model for this was the wheel of life. You've done this, the wheel of life exercise as coaches, I'm sure with everyone. Um, now imagine if they are unequally developed, how does the wheel move? It jumps. Trying to move the wheel to take the cart up the hill is very hard because it's not round, of course, because of the differences in them. If they're equal, but very small, it moves smoothly, but you need to put a lot more fuel in it to go the same distance. The key to it is to balance them, and in the same time, get to as much as you can out of the 100%. Then you get the optimum speed that you can have for the um, for the wheel speed and distance because of course you can if you're at 10 percent the speed because it's the speed is the uh, uh, it, the speed would be very high but distance would be very low because uh, it doesn't move that fast Okay, engineering anal analogies, I got it. I'll make a note. Do not make engineering analogies with them yet. They don't get your job, Strabi. That's, that's the idea with the process. Now, uh, why I said I'm making an offer and I'm not making an offer today. The offer is, this is what's here. But I've decided to not take on about two years ago, not to take on any clients that I do not personally vet. So I'm not even gonna give you prices today. I'm going to say, if you think that this is interesting for you, drop me a line and let's have a chat to see what is suitable. Uh, and that's it. I still need to give you the link so that you have the link um, before you all go. Executive, maybe uh, Eddie, you can help me with this. It's executivemastery.ae slash best coach in one word. Um, disregard the prices on the website and let's have a chat. There will be a special offer for 48 hours from now. Details to come. It's as easy as that. But then again, most likely you'll have, you'll have a fourth option that will only be for you. And that's it. Um, recording of the session. I will be recording the session. I'm deciding if I'm sharing the recording. This is part of the, you know, when people uh, sign up and don't show up, this is the thank you because you showed up you get you get the knowledge so in principle i don't share the recordings um i will for this one uh, if if you ask for the recording then i'll do it i'll share the recording with you for sure yeah okay um thanks eddie you have the link by the way as i said i'm not even going to go through the special offers you'll see it's a, it's a very significant big special offer. But then again, um, this is the general approach and I will only be taking on clients and building your the own version for you because I don't work with groups anymore in this. So the support that I'm giving is one-to-one. -one. That works, that I can guarantee. Um, and 
to end, I'm going to say, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. And there's always more, much more. So if you're ready for this, if you're ready to start having a successful coaching business, drop me a line. Uh, Eddie, do you, can you write my email address as well and my WhatsApp number, please? Um, and if you have any questions, um, I'm here with you still for a bit. The session doesn't close, literally, officially we are until 10. If you have any questions, I will answer the questions now. Don't worry. Uh, and then we'll be sharing the recording with the ones that are no longer with us. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Yes. And if you have any questions, I'm looking forward to receiving them. Thank you very much uh, for all the feedback. Thank you. Um, I will not be able to check the to check out the reference while I'm live. So give me a bit of time to have a look on it, and let's talk after the session. Um, also, not going to share something else on my screen apart from my session. Thank you very much. <laughs> Although I appreciate the idea of everyone always making an an offer, <laughs> I'll still be managing this session on my own. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, and the WhatsApp one, Eddie, please, and the email. So that you have all my contact details, you can just copy and paste them from here. Uh, you will get an email reminder tomorrow morning because the 48 hours expires on Tuesday morning, Dubai time, that is. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. Looking forward to keep in touch. And you know, I always like to say there's people think that success is like, getting step by step you read another book you go to another course uh, and you build to get to the penthouse uh, it's very simple there's an elevator if you want to get the elevator then um, text me and we'll be in touch as we don't have any questions i'm just going to say thank you very much everyone thank you very much consolidon also for organizing this summit there are more sessions coming up um, and you're going to get all the details. There's a WhatsApp uh, group that you can join where you can get links and information about the other events. Hopefully, someone can paste it in the chat as well. Because um, the week is just beginning, and this was the first session of uh, the amazing web summit that we have prepared for you for these uh, for the upcoming seven days, I think, will be a uh, lot of interesting sessions to grow your businesses. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And have a great and successful day and week ahead, wherever you are, uh, wherever you are on the planet. <laughs>